What's up everybody, this is Jake Berkey and Trey from Busted Knuckle Off-Road and we wanted to introduce you guys to our Hydro Boost kit. And uh, this is a tech video. You know, we're gonna explain to you guys how to put this thing together, the frequently asked questions, the do's, the don'ts, basically go over the product and explain to you why you need it in your rig. So let's get started. We wanna talk about a couple things that are specific to Hydro Boost and Trey is gonna explain to us why do you need Hydro Boost in your rig? Right. Hydro Boost is a great way to increase your input force on your master cylinder itself by reducing the pressure that you need to apply with your foot. Uh, it does that by using the pressure from your power steering pump, which is why it's important that it's ported so that it doesn't uh, drag down the rest of your full hydraulic or whatever steering system you're choosing to run. Um, a lot of different um, uh, scenarios where a guy might want it in his buggy. Um, can help with if you got a really hard pedal and you got manual brakes, sometimes you can throw this at the setup and get a lot better brakes. Um, can help if you have, you know, if you like to let your kids or something drive your rig or your wife and she's not maybe not as strong as you are, this can, can help her be more comfortable driving and you get to go up wheeling more often. So the reason that we sell this kit versus somebody just going over to O'Reilly's or something and buying a regular Hydro Boost is that when we have off-road buggies, we use high volume off-road power steering pumps. And that off-road power steering pump gets choked down by the factory Hydro Boost unit. So what we do is we actually port this unit and allow it to have enough flow that your aftermarket power steering pump can actually work properly. Now, you have to be careful because there is a limit to how much flow you can shove through these fittings and through this actual pump. And we found out that that's around seven gallons per minute, which would include your CBR pump, your TC pump, your P pump, all from like um, uh, yeah, PSC. PSC steering or how or something like that. Now, when you get into some of these aftermarket pumps that are flowing a lot of fluid, sometimes you'll have to use a diverter valve or something to be able to make this work. But it all goes back to the full on thing that you want fast steering, you want powerful steering, and you also want good brakes, and this is gonna help you get there. Now before we get started with the entire video, we want everybody out there to understand that this product is designed to work with certain size calipers. If you have calipers that are too large, for this master cylinder and we see it all the time with guys who are running like a super duty caliper setup or something like that if your caliper volume is too large for this master cylinder this whole system will not work if your caliper size is too small the system will not work you have to have calipers that are designed to work with this system if you need help on what calipers you need for your system, you can definitely let us know. We also have a brake, calip uh, brake calculator that's online on the website where you can find out exactly what size brake calipers you need. But nine out of 10 questions that we get from guys who call in all falls back to the caliper size not being correct. You will either have a very spongy pedal or you won't get any pedal or it'll return extremely slow or you'll have a ton of heat in the system and most of those are equated to too large of a caliper. Very rarely we see too small of a caliper because this is gonna increase your pedal force by about four. So we don't see too small of a caliper be an issue but too large is very, very common with this kit. One of our most common questions is what's the size of this thing? It looks really big, but is it gonna fit in your buggy? Normally, we tell guys that the whole booster and master cylinder itself takes up about 15 inches forward to backwards, and it fits in just about a six by six square, 15 inches long. Now this is meant to basically be the firewall if you have anything like that in your buggy. Um, the pedal, is about six, eight inches, uh, depending on how you uh, orient the pedal swing itself. So overall, I tell guys to a lot about two feet overall, and then that six by six cube. Uh, if you've got that kind of clearance, you've got more than enough room for hoses to come in and out um, and mount the pedal. Now the pedal you'll, is laser cut one eighth. It's, or is it one eighth or three sixteenths? Three sixteenths. Yeah, so it's laser cut three sixteenths steel. It's got mounting holes in multiple patterns drilled up here. Uh, it's meant so that you can you can weld it to your chassis, you can bolt it in. It's just meant to be really user friendly. Um, 
Jake mentioned it a little earlier, but we've got multiple mounting holes for the pedal itself to the bracket, and that can adjust the this the um, angle. the static angle of the pedal, so you can make it a little bit closer to you or further away, depending on where you're comfortable. And that's something else, you know, you can switch it for another driver mm -hmm. that may be a little shorter or taller than you. Right. Um, We've also got this little uh, threaded rod right here, so if you needed to do a fine adjustment, you can actually take that threaded rod thread it in and out on the clevis and you can get that perfect angle. Yeah. Now another common question is this push rod interface with the uh, Hydro Boost itself. Uh, this little rod here, it really just snaps into the fitting here. Uh, we ship them unassembled because it's really common for this thing to jar around in the box and, and get lost. So we just put it in the hardware kit so that we make sure that it actually makes it to you guys. But that thing just snaps in there. Uh, if, it, if you have a problem with it coming out, you can squeeze the end of that with some pliers or something. Um, but it is intended to hold so that when you're facing uphill, the pedal doesn't fall away from the booster, and now you've got no connection to your brake pedal. All right, guys, so the Hydro Boost, once it's in your vehicle, needs to be oriented a certain way. You need to make sure that the fittings are pointing up. Now, we have had guys flip them upside down for clearance issues. They haven't called back and specifically said that they weren't going to work, but we're telling you that the correct way that this is designed to work is with the fittings pointed up, okay? Now, the pressure is going to come in on the fitting that's closest to the master cylinder. That's where the pressure comes in at. And then it goes out from this fitting over to your full hydraulic orbital valve. This is going to be a return. It's got this little nipple on here, and we're going to open this up. This return is extremely important, okay? If you know a lot about pressure and flow, you know that if you have a large diameter hole, it has a lot more flow, but a lot less pressure. This whole entire system works on pressure. So if you go in and you put a different fitting other than what's in here from the factory, you can change the way this system works and how much pressure it builds. Do not modify the return fitting. You need to put a regular hose on here and you need to go directly over to your reservoir and then return that fluid back to the reservoir. I'm gonna repeat that. Make sure you leave this fitting in there and do not, do not change this fitting out for something that has a larger orifice. One of the questions that we get is about the function of the hydraulic system, like if you were to lose your power steering or something. Um, all the hydro boosts are designed with an accumulator over here on the side. And what that does is it allows you to have one or two good pushes on the hydraulic system before you run out of brakes. So if you're driving and you lose your power steering, you basically have one or two good pushes before you start getting rock hard brakes. So we do have that question come up sometimes. So this is what you're gonna get in the kit from the highly trained staff that Trey manages. You're gonna get a box just like this. You're gonna have all of your packing inside there. And as you open this box up, you're gonna have a couple different components. The Hydro Boost unit itself, master cylinder. Keep on digging what we got there, Trey. Top section of our pedal. Pedal. Hardware pack. Let's see what else we have. O rings. Okay. And empty box. All right. So. This is the bracket that the master cylinder is gonna to bolt to. And this actually is the meat and potatoes of the mechanical system where the pedal actually moves back and forth. And we'll show you exactly kind of how this works, but uh, I said master cylinder, it should be actually hydro boost. The hydro boost bolts right. to that. Just like that right there. There's a big nut right there. You just take the snap ring off, take your big nut, slide it through, put your nut back on the other side. Uh, we actually, we've seen guys do this a bunch. You can actually use a punch right there on the side if you don't have this big four-sided socket, and you can actually get a punch right there and hit it with a hammer, and it'll tighten that down. It's got some serrated edges on it, so it won't loosen back up. Um, you got push rods. That's something that we see all the time, guys ask questions about. Let's see here. Okay, uh, we've got... Uh, so in with your, in with your Willwood master cylinder, there's going to be a hardware kit. This is for bench bleeding the, the Willwood master cylinder. Right. You definitely want to do that. It's going to make your job later on a whole lot easier. A uh, little hardware kit that comes with the Willwood master cylinder. Uh, you're going to need these adapters probably, but you will not need any of the push rods that come in there. 
the push rod that goes between the master cylinder is the one that comes in your hardware kit from Busted Knuckle Off-Road. It's about three and it's four and five eighths, is that right? Yeah, something like yeah. that. We gotta measure it, but yeah. Right. Um, that's important later in the remote mount because there's a different push rod. But that rod uh, goes in here like this and into the back of the master cylinder. And when you bolt the two together, that's where the magic happens, right? Um, yep. And this is, I guess you'd call that what a, se a second push rod or whatever. You've got this other push rod right here that actually goes to the pedal. And we get guys asking us about this little guy right here. But what that does is that threads on just like that to the clevis and it goes up inside the end of the, your hydro boost unit. And then that's actually where the pivot happens right here um, on the pedal. So we'll, uh, we'll assemble this real quick and show you kind of how all the stuff goes together. So this is what the pedal will look like whenever it's all assembled. Uh, you've got a big shoulder bolt that goes through the main two components here. And then you've got a smaller shoulder bolt with a clevis that actually goes to the hydro booster. Now, if you look at this from the side, you can actually see that we have two different holes here, one here and one here. And that's just so that you can position the pedal based on your cab design and how you want your pedal to be inside your vehicle. Now, on the other side, you can see we've got these nylock washers and then the shoulder bolts actually protrude just a little bit past the bracket. And what that's designed to do is you can take this nut and you can tighten it all the way down and it won't squeeze this bracket and cause it to have drag. So it's designed to actually be tightened down, shoulder bolts a little bit longer than the two components. And then whenever you put a bunch of torque on it, it won't come back apart and also it's free floating at the same time. So the next step is once we get our pedal all situated is we're gonna put it on the hydro boost unit. So we went ahead and took the nut off and the snap ring, but basically that slides in like this, goes through the hole. You gotta kinda play it a little bit and it goes on there. You gotta wiggle it just right. Okay, and uh, then you put your nut on, just like this. And when you get it to the point where it's all the way tightened, like I said before, you can actually use a punch to tighten this down if you don't have the right tool, but they do make a hydro boost nut tool basically that you can use to tighten that all the way down. Uh, so once you get it all the way tight, which is about right there, then you're gonna put your snap ring back on the shaft and put your snap ring on. That just keeps the nut from being able to come back out. So that's what it's gonna look like basically fully assembled, all the mechanics of it. The push rod goes inside the hydro booster just like that. And uh, whenever you hit the brakes, it's gonna push out and come back just like normal brake system. Shouldn't take too, too much explanation on that. However, the orientation of this is very important. We've seen guys actually put this together with the hydro booster upside down. Our preference is to actually have the hydro booster with the fittings going vertically. Um, that allows any air or anything to come out of the system whenever the system's running. Now that we got our pedal all assembled, about time to put the master cylinder on. Again, this is the push rod that you want to use, the one that comes in the Hydro Boost um, hardware kit, not the Willwood kit. Um, so we can drop the push rod in, put it all up. These are lock nuts, don't have any tools, but uh, just like that. These Willwood master cylinders have ports on both sides. Uh, you know, for just being more of a universal master cylinder. If the different fittings are in here, you'll find plugs to put in one side that you're not using. There's 3 8 24 and 7 16 um, inverted flare adapters in, in this hardware kit as well. So if you just want to use your old hard lines coming straight in, um, we've also got dash 3 adapters if you want to run flexible lines out from there. Um, Jake's got our 16 and 18 millimeter fittings. These are modified here at Busted Knuckle to fit our Hydro Boost units. Um, we are fully porting these Hydro Boost units. Um, so that means a lot for the rest of your power steering system. Yeah, so what we're talking about with that fully ported thing is from the factory, that Hydro Boost has a tapered fitting at the bottom of its seat. Uh, we actually take that fitting and we cut it off and go to an o-ring style fitting and it seals on the top And the reason is is because when we port these out we drill through that uh, That orifice or that that seat and it basically has nowhere to seat So you can't use a standard hydro boost unit and if you see a hydro boost unit that is using the standard fittings with the tapered seat on the bottom That is a red flag that they didn't do a good enough job actually porting these things out, but you got an 18 millimeter and you got a 16 millimeter and there's only one way that they can go. So you just thread it down there and these you don't have to put a lot of torque on. 
Uh, you can basically just tighten them up with, um, with whatever type of wrench and just give it a little snug at the end. So these fittings, they have a metal ring that comes with them, then the O-ring, and they're designed to just be snug down. You don't have to put a lot of force on them because they actually seal where that O-ring touches the fitting. So when you go to tighten these down, I mean, just a, a firm snug is all that you need. You don't have to go cranking down on these things at all. Um, same thing with a master cylinder. We've seen guys try to tighten these things down exponentially with an impact gun. Guys, that's just cast right there. That's, it's gonna break off if you put a whole bunch of torque on it. So when you go to tighten up the master cylinder, put your master cylinder on there, give it a little snug, a little goot and tight, and then rock out. Don't have to worry about running this thing down with an impact gun. Now that you've got your unit all assembled, you got your lines in place, you're ready to bleed it, right? So you're, you're hooking up your uh, pressure line from the power steering pump over here. You're going back out to your orbital. You got this going directly to your power steering reservoir, no T's. And when you start the vehicle to bleed the power steering, this thing's gonna pretty much bleed along with it. As you're filling up that system, working your tires back and forth, this thing's gonna bleed, it's really easy. Now, the brake side of things, it's just like the rest of your vehicles. You know, you're gonna wanna bench bleed the master cylinder with the kit that comes with it hook up your lines and then just bleed with your normal, you know, whatever system you're comfortable with. Some guys have got, we actually here at Busted Knuckle, we've got vacuum systems, we've got pressure systems, then there's the good old have somebody push and, you know, open up the valve. Any of that stuff's gonna work. So you've got the Hydro Boost in your vehicle and you're about to fire this thing up or you fired this thing up and you're seeing some type of an issue. Trey, what are some of the issues that we hear about all the time, some of the phone calls that we get? One of the most common is that I just fired it up and the pedal sucks to the floor and my rig won't go anywhere. Yep, so what happens when that happens is you didn't listen to the video and you got your hydraulic line swapped. If you take your hydraulic line from your power steering pump and you put it into the wrong fitting, it will actually take the pedal and it'll suck it down and it'll lock your brakes down. So Trey, again, which one's the pressure coming in and which one's the pressure going out? All right, you've always got your power steering pump plumbed directly to this port. It is opposite from the return. And then the one on the same side as the return is gonna to go to your orbital valve. Okay. Another way to remember that is this fitting is closer to the master cylinder. So the fitting that's closest to the master cylinder is the one where your pressure goes in. And the one that's farther away from the master cylinder is where your pressure goes out. Yeah. It's okay. also the smaller orifice. It's also the smaller orifice, okay. I've heard you on the phone before talking to guys about this guy right here, which is the return line. Right. You know, cardinal yep. sin here. Yep, honestly, we cannot say this enough. Just don't modify this thing. It, it's so easy to want to put an AN fitting there that's gonna change the orifice size in this fitting. Uh, this really is part of the magic of the Hydro Boost. If you change that, you'll have a situation where you have very little boost. Um, it can also cause the pedal to suck down. It, can, it just throws off the whole balance of the system, which is how the Hydro Boost honestly functions, is balance inside of the chambers there. And modifying this is just gonna cause it not to work right. Another thing you gotta be really careful about, and we see guys do this all the time, they've got a reservoir for their power steering pump, and they come off of the return line, and because they don't have enough ports in their reservoir, they go to a T, okay? The way this works is with two balance chambers on the inside, you have to have a free flowing return line going back to your reservoir. If you do not and you have back pressure here, then you can cause those same situations to happen where the pedal doesn't generate a lot of force or your hydro boost doesn't generate a lot of force or your pedal sucks down. This needs to have uninterrupted flow all the way back to the reservoir, no T's, T's are out. So another question that we get asked all the time is uh, about the actual unit itself and whether or not we sell it. So Trey, we do, don't we? And we, we, we actually sell those things by themselves. Yep, yep, you'll find it on the website under Hydro Boost Unit Only. Um, that way you can, if you wanna mount it in your Jeep or use your own master cylinder, you know, um, can be a universal application. Yep. Let us know, give me a call on that kind of stuff because we can hook you up with a different loop here, maybe even the mounting plate that comes with the thing just to help you out a little bit. Another question we get asked a lot of times is whether or not the Hydro Boost is gonna affect the steering. And the whole reason that we came out with this product is because we want to impede your steering as little as possible, okay? If you have a factory Hydro Boost system and you're trying to run your steering through there and you're steering and hitting the brakes, you're gonna get a lot more ill effect than with our unit, which is ported. So that's kind of the reason that we want to do that. Now, if you're a racer, 
and you're trying to get the absolute most out of your steering, you have to know that a Hydroboost unit is going to pull some of your steering force or steering volume right. away and divert it to your brakes. So if you're steering and you're hitting the brakes at the same time, you will feel a little bit less steering quickness. Right. Um, but most of the guys would rather have amazing brakes than the tiny little bit of steering imperfection that you get with our unit or any unit for that matter. So usually people, they don't have any complaints, especially like even the hardcore trail rider guys. Having amazing brakes is worth the sacrifice. All right, so another question that we get all the time is about having either a rock hard or a spongy pedal, okay? Um, the most common is the spongy pedal, where basically they're just, you know, the customer's just not getting any type of break, and they describe it as they can't get the air out of the system. Right. They think that they haven't bled the system properly, but they're not getting any more bubbles, but they don't have any hydraulic pressure in the actual brake system. So, Trey, we see it all the time, man. What is it that it's causing this to happen? It's too big of calipers. Guys want to run, from a simplicity standpoint, the stock brakes from Super Duties, even the Ford Dana 60s, the uh, Kingpins, they, they have, those things are absolutely giant calipers from a fluid capacity standpoint. This master cylinder simply is not big enough to fill those up and generate the pressure you need to stop. So in general, a long pedal travel means you got too much brake caliper on both ends. Um, our Super Duty caliper uh, packages can solve that issue for you. Um, on the other end of that spectrum, a rock hard pedal from your Hydro Boost with very little travel generally means that your calipers are way too small and this is filling them up way too fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, they all have to be selected properly. The master cylinder must match the caliper bore size. Yep. And guys, we have brake kits for your front and rear axle 90% of the time that's going to work great with this system. We sell them as a kit that goes all over the, all over the world, really, and uh, we've got very, very uh, many happy customers with just the way that everything is designed and works with our stuff. One thing to note about this particular master cylinder is there's two ports, okay? The rear port is going to have less of a volume than the front port, so it's designed for calipers in the back that are smaller in, in bore size than calipers in the front. And this matches really well to a standard brake system. So um, guys, we, we hopefully will answer all your questions in this video and hopefully, you know, you can go to our website, you can watch this video, you can get, you know, your system installed properly and you're going to have great brakes. Um, but you know, sometimes we see these where they don't fit in the, in the buggy, right? Right. And, and we've, we've had a lot of guys call up and say, man, I really want Hydro Boost, but uh, you know, it doesn't fit. And guess what? We designed a kit for that. So check out our next video. It's the remote Hydro Boost kit. And it's basically this that you can mount everywhere.